remember when we used to run away through the night. I'm Brandon and this is Shore Fisherman UK. Today we've got a bit of a special video, it's our first catch and cook episode, hopefully. Uh, three targets today as well. Uh, we're hoping for a flounder, a place and something I haven't caught before. So there are our three targets. We're going to be fishing four rods on two rod stands, uh, two sets of flatty rigs and probably a big mackerel bait and a squid bait, uh, hoping for a cod. Uh, possibly a bass, there's a little bit of shallow surf today which is always great. So yeah guys, we're going to see what happens, hopefully you guys are enjoying the channel. That's the little flatty rig we're using today guys. I've got a two hook flapper that I made up on one. And this is just a three hook flapper with some little gold and silver spinners. Plenty of like different colour beads, trying lots of different combos. We're gonna be using some black lug, tipped off with squid, maybe some tip offs with some small bits of mackerel and stuff like that. On a nice sandy beach that should do quite well. Got some surface in the water over there, as always. There's our black lug. That's gonna be nice in here. Just wrap my knife up in this little carrier bag because I lost the sheet. They just stopped me from doing what I needed, just did stabbing myself. Just gonna cut one squid out for now. Remember guys, with tip-offs, we're not trying to put a massive chunk of squid on, we're just putting a little bit on just after the hook look, so that these are your perfect sizes for little tip off baits. You want you need the fish to be able to get it in its mouth. That's obviously quite important. Uh, our worms, we're not gonna be using these whole either. Probably gonna be cutting them in half. We're not gonna be trying to put these on the hook completely frozen guys, because it's just not gonna happen. We're just gonna let them defrost a little bit first. More than enough for our first set of bait. I'll give you a little rundown of these little rigs that I've made. So I've used 50 pound on the on the main line of the rig body, and then we've got 25 pound on our little traces here. Lots of little beads and flashy bits and bobs that the flounders and place seem to really enjoy using. All I'm going to do is just cut my worm into little sections. For the ragworm, I'd probably use it whole. It should be just about frozen enough for us to put on the hook now, guys. Just going to spin that around like that and get that on the hook. And then the last part is just getting our little tip off baits here. And just thread that on once. And that's lovely. And then we've got a little bead attractor there that's pushing that bait down. That's one. And then we're just going to do the same thing throughout. Thread the worm onto the hook. Just like that, nice and tidy. It's going to stay on there. Thank you. 
Now, black lug and small baits of black lug are really good for little schoolie bass as well. They really, really enjoy it. Uh, so if there are any schoolie bass here today, uh, we'll be into them quite easily, I think. There's three things that bass love. A surf, shallow water, black lug, mussels, stuff like that, crab baits. They like to eat, they like, they like, obviously they like what's on the beach, don't they? So if you can into it, in, if you can make the tide's coming in pretty quick here, so we are running out of time. I want to get the bait chucked in. The water's starting to look really nice now. We'll get these guys in and then we'll get our bigger baits set up, ready to go out. These little tail sections, I tend to use, I would use two on one because they do, they do fall apart a bit. And they're a pretty small bait, so I'll put two on. And that'll make one good one. So you just like that. No, we kind of just made something out of nothing there. That's it guys. That's a perfect flatty bait and a bass will take that as well. Now we're using five ounce, five ounce spike lead today. These are my favorite ones to use. That's it, we'll get those casted out and hopefully we can get into some fish. All right guys, so I'm gonna make a little uh, a little wrap now uh, just we're on a sandy beach so a lot of fish will will take a bluey so what we're going to do is we're just going to get a little section of bluey here I'm probably going to start we're not going to use absolutely massive baits today what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start by cutting this bluey in half now what we're aiming to do here is get maximum scent in the water so I'm just going to flip that inside out like this all right now what we're going to do is take our squid and just cut a portion of that off just like that all right now you could do this however you like personal preference really we're just going to put that in there and then i'm going to crush it down a little bit take your bait elastic start wrapping it up all right just like that lots and lots of bait elastic it's gonna hold that together nice get a nice little parcel out of it gonna get our hook now and that's this is how we're gonna bait this up and we're just gonna go through the bottom out just like that That's it guys, as you can see by the state of my hands, that, that's a bait that's got plenty of blood in it, lots of scent. I'm going to cast that out now on the multiplier guys. I'm going to give you guys a tiny little tutorial, sort of like a little beginner's guide on multipliers and how, how you can use them um, and how to generally get started on the, um, the one I'm going to be using is the Abu uh, 6500 C4. So I'll give you guys a little idea on how that's used now.
So guys, this is the uh, multiplier. The first thing we're going to do before we cast out is hold the rod up. There's a little dial on the side here. You want it to slowly fall. So if I wind that back in quickly, and my weight's back to the top, I click that, and if you watch, it falls quite fast. Now we have a little dial on the side here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten that up. See, this is with a five ounce lead, guys. If I let it out now, it doesn't move, because I've tightened it. Now the idea is you want the weight, when this is undone, to slow very slowly. Not too slow, but you don't want it to fall out really fast. See, the more I let go of that, the faster it falls. Now you've got to keep playing with this until you get it just right. I'd like to go a little bit faster than that. Tighten it a little bit. That's about right guys. Now if you cast it out and you get a bird's nest, you want to tighten that down a little bit, alright? There's no burst in this cell at all. Now I've had a little bit of practice with these. It might not be quite as easy for you guys, but as with anything, the most important thing is take your time with it. Go to a field, practice, get it right. Don't give up just because you keep getting things wrong because it took me a long time to learn. And learning's no easy thing, it takes time. Stick with it. There's a little lever on the side, you just got to play with that. And I think we might have a couple of fish on guys, so I'm going to start reading those in now. And hopefully we've got something. Um, we'll see what happens, alright? Because it's a sandy beach, it's as I walk up the beach, I'm shutting the bail arm and dragging the lead into the sand. So that'll stop it drifting a little bit, obviously not completely, but it does help. It's going to sit back now, guys. I'm going to stick with this setup for a minute. Things aren't great, I think everything's a bit too close together. But what we're doing on our next bait is that bait up, and just going to spread things up a little bit, cover some more ground. And yeah, we'll um, keep an eye on the rod tip, see what's happening, and hopefully we can get into some fish. This is, this is important, right? If there's a knot in your line, you need to undo the knot or you need to put a new trace on because this knot eventually, you get a big fish on that. I'm not, I know it's only a little flatty rig, but bass will still take it. And if you get a big pull on that, it's going to snap. So just undo your knots if you've got any. And if you can't, then just cut it and put a new new trace on. Guys, we have moved to a different spot now. The um, the other market, Widewater, the, the easterly got too much and my legs were just getting dragged around all over the place. So we're at Kingston Beach now. Uh, I think we found a spot where there's not many swimmers, so we're going to try it out and see how it goes. Uh, pure flat bashing here, probably just one. One whole squid chucked out on the off chance that there's bass floating around there. But definitely are some bass in this, in this little stretch of river here, the opening of the mouth of the River Ada. So we've been here for like, I don't know, about an hour, two hours now. We still haven't caught anything. Uh, we're just pure flatty rigs at the moment. We don't really think there's going to be nothing big in here. 
we've got some options. We either move up the River Aider and we try that as the tide's coming in, or we're going to give the west, no, the east Shoreham Arm, we might give that a go and chuck some big baits in. We think the um, we think the current might be alright up there, so that might be an option. But yeah, things are pretty dead at the moment. It's freezing cold. Baits are in the water and we're still trying. Nothing else we can do. All right, guys, we just we've moved now. We just left of the um, the East Shoreham Arm. I didn't realise that it had a gate on it and, and that you couldn't get on it. I, I think I heard something a little while ago about needing a membership, but um, yeah, it's not something I'd, I'd be interested in just because I live so far away and it's not a spot I fish all the time. I mean, if I lived in Shoreham, it'd probably be great, but this isn't a mark I hit a lot. So we moved over to some slightly bigger baits now. Obviously, I've got I've still got my two, two flappers out there. Um, with some squid and some black lug on uh, see if there are any flatties about I think personally it's a little bit too rough for that kind of thing and then um, the other two rods just over there to the right I got a whole bluey on one and a whole squid on the other both on running ledgers uh, both one 6 -0 and one 4 -0. the one squid's 4 -0, the one with the blueys is 6 -0. Uh the one with the bluey, the whole bluey is quite close in it does look like we're getting a little bit of seaweed up the line now, which obviously isn't great. Um, if that gets too bad, I'll pull it in and check it. But for the meantime, guys, as, as always, we're just going sit to tight, sit tight and wait. Well, guys, it might only be a rockling, but there's a little phrase, and I love saying it. Saves a blank. There he is. Sure he's got a little bit of bait elastic or something hanging out his mouth we'll just get rid of that for him it can go back nice and comfortable then there he is little rockling first fish of the day uh, a little, little little bit of a battle scar on his tail there that, that'll be from a conga that will that sort of shape but he survived he's still going there he is say hello to the camera dude don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel <laughs> gonna put him back. No, I'm not eating that. No. Too smart. What are we gonna get off that? No. Well, this tank bigger. Make sure I'm gonna get you always with your fish, make sure you get them back at the right, right moment. Don't just chuck them in the surf and think they're gonna be okay. They're just gonna keep washing up. Oh yeah, treat fish with respect. You'll catch more that way. I'm in a better mood now. It might only be a rock thing, but to me, that's um thumbs up. So hopefully that's the start of something. The sea has started to come off a lot more now, so maybe the, the little fish and the, the rock thing and the, the dabs and the blooming flounders and place have all just started to come in. Uh, we've got a nice little bank here that drops down and after that it's all nice and sandy. So yeah. So guys, I noticed that the, um, the bites will start picking up a bit more now and I usually find that it's not because of the tide like as such, it's more due to at high on this mark you'll be casting onto shingle. Now at low, you're casting onto sand. And I think that's what makes a difference. It's where so we're getting a, some some taps on on the on one of our little turret flapper rods. So I'm just gonna hang on. It goes and then it stops. And then it goes and then it stops. Now I'm using grip leads, but there's not a lot of tidal movement. It's only really going out at the moment, which isn't a problem for us. You don't push your lead 
either way it pulls it out so um, I can pick that up now and hold it like that and if I feel a bite I can pull into it and then if there's nothing there I can just let it drop again which is fine so that's a, a good technique to find it because you don't want to sit there for 20 30 minutes not knowing there's a fish on the line when in fact there is especially if you've only got one hook um, if there's a fish there you want to pull it in figure out what it is eat it put it back and then get a fresh bait out and get another one so if you think there might be something there there's always a certain I always give it about five minutes um, if the bait if the rod tip don't move I'll just pull it in anyway just to check my bait because you either sat there with a fish on that you don't know about and place and flounder can be really uh, formidable for stuff like that it's kind of their the thing that they do or you're going to come back to a strip bait in which case you've had nothing out there the whole time one thing you can do when it's not too rough is just if you look at the rod tip now see my rod tip's not bent but the bite detection is better now if I tighten that down like how I would normally have it for bass fishing because I like to see if I've got a slack liner and how, how to tell if you've got a slack liner is to have your line tight when you're fishing for big stuff and it'll ping up but my bite detection now for small stuff has been kind of reduced quite a lot so find find a good point in the middle and that's perfect nice side drop in there there we go absolutely gargled that um, black rag not really having too much luck today guys although we are definitely trying like I say that's what it is it's just hot luck the fish are either where you are or they're not at the moment all we got to play with is these little guys but it'd be nice if they gave you some sort of bite but you just don't know they're there until you see them on the shingle so uh, they're considered to be a bit of a pest really especially when you're targeting other things in this clip guys the rod stand went flying over and I had the choice between picking up two rods I went for the left rod felt like it was slack lining and there was nothing there and by the time I got to the second one I felt a little bit of well a little bit of real heavy weight at the beginning I got a couple of wines in and it came off quite shortly so I'm almost certain I lost a ray another rock clean guys that's number three we're going to um I'm sick of this spot now uh, what we're going to do is we're going to move up move up the Ada uh, and we're going to go and try and get some flounder up there so we're, we're definitely done at this mark now we're going to go get him back have a little slimy demon um, we're just doing a bit of flatty bashing uh, just up the Ada now uh, going to try for some flounder the sea's been pretty crap today I managed to pull three, um, three rockling out not great but still something could be um could have been a total blank would have been loads worse but yeah i don't i don't really i'm not really gonna be attempting to pull anything out of that sea uh anymore today i've definitely had enough of it but, so yeah what we're gonna do just gonna out straight through the finger now just gonna tip these off now uh, a little bit of squid just gonna put the hook through once one it just stops the worm being pulled straight off the hook uh, and it's a little bit of extra scent as well so double whammy on the bonuses pretty tired guys I've been awake since half past five I think this morning um, I don't sleep till early hours in the morning because I sit up all night watching films I have um, I have children at home and they take up a lot of time during the day so at night time when everyone's asleep uh, I tend to sit up and watch some movies and just have some me time um, think about fishing think about where I'm gonna fish what I'm going to fish for, what I'm, going to, what I'm not going to catch.
and then I wake up, have my breakfast, think about fishing. Go talk to my girlfriend about fishing, which she's probably quite fed up of now. Uh, she's put up with me for four years. Guys, that's it for today's video. I've been here 18 hours now. I'm absolutely exhausted, so I'm going to pack up and go home. Uh, we've had three rock to show for our efforts, which is a lot better than a blank. So there we go, guys. I was just packing away. I'd already done the outro and I was ready to go home. Sick, tired, and been here for 18 hours now. I had, I had, I had three targets today. My first target was a place for a flounder. Now we've got the flounder. The second target was to catch something I hadn't caught before. Uh, we had a little bit of a close shave on the beach early. My rod stand went over and I think we just missed a ray. Um, but after that, I, I, I know it sounds a bit funny, but I caught a cockle. Um, so there's something I ain't caught before. And the only thing we didn't get was... What was it? A, oh, no, yeah, it was, a, it was a flounder. I can't remember what it was, guys. You'll have to remind me in the comments. But I'm happy, actually, just to get one of my targets. It's nice to come out in the middle of February and get onto something that I set out to get in the first place. Now, I've still got three more rods to reel in, so hopefully they've all got something on as well. But I never knew that guy was on there. He didn't give me any bites at all. Um, this is quite a, a thick tip, old school, sort of, I think it's a, a 90s rod, so it doesn't really give the best bite detection. But at the end of the day, guys, there's our, one of our target species for the, for the video, so makes everything kind of worth it. Can you feel